Hello, everyone, and welcome to This Week in Star Wars' Saturday edition of our Star Wars Celebration Chicago coverage. This episode was recorded live today from the Collector's Social Lounge with me and special guest Jake Stevens, who you no doubt are familiar with from his work with me on the Galaxy of Toys podcast, his old Toy Run podcast, as well as his From Forlom to Zuckus website, which you should all check out. Jake and I talk about just about everything Celebration, including yesterday's Episode 9 panel and the Hasbro panel. The audio for this is generally good, but I apologize for all the ambient noise. We were in a lounge, after all. And a final reminder to keep looking for me if you're at Celebration to get all that sweet This Week in Star Wars swag. So, not to belabor anything, let's just get to today's show. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, uh, everybody, uh, welcome to the, what are we in, the Collector's Social Lounge? I think that's right. Um, I'm Matt Fox. We're going to be doing This Week in Star Wars. Um, we're celebrating 10 years of podcasting here in 2019, so uh, welcome to the party. Um, we hope you're enjoying uh, the celebration so far as we, uh, I guess this is sort of the halfway point, yeah. middle of day three. Middle of day three. First time a five-day celebration, so well, it's... No, no. L.A. 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 Oh. was five days. Was it? Yeah. My memory has lost that time in my life. It was a long time. It was 12 years ago, so I had to look it up. I did not. I, I completely blanked that out. Jake Stevens, by the way. Oh, okay. He jumped the gun. I was going to introduce... <laughs> I wasn't sure if you were just going to breeze over it. No, I was going to... Our special guest, I promised that uh, we'd have somebody, and it is none other than... The Honorable Jake Stevens. Presiding. Um, you know him from Forlom to Zuckus, uh, the late, great, lamented Toy Run podcast, uh, Galaxy of Toys, where we're frequently uh, on a show together. Or infrequently. Infrequently. Whenever, there's, <laughs> whenever we're summoned, we do a show. Um, and we're here just to talk about celebration, uh, what we've learned in the first day and a half of panels. Um, we had a couple big events yesterday. Obviously, we had the episode nine panel. Yeah. And we now know that that's going to be called um, Rise of Skywalker. The Rise. The Rise of I, Skywalker. I'm, not, I'm still not used to the T. Do we use the T? Is it T-R-O-S or is it just going to be R-O-S? Because well, we, we ESP. Dro we dropped the T for ESP, but we keep it in everything else. The Force Awakens. Yeah, it is TFA. It's TCW. The Last Jedi. So I think we have to keep the T. T. Ross. Isn't that a rapper from the 80s? Special Ed. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, so, what do you think? Well, everybody's going to speculate on what that means, who the Skywalker is. Who do you think it is? Who, who it is or what, what it, it is. is. What it is. That's the crazy thing. Now, this... This panel comes, uh, that panel drops such the insane reveal at the end. We hear the chuckle, and if you're sitting in the Wintrust uh, Stadium, you see then, you're like processing the chuckle, and like that sounded like Palpatine, and then sure enough, none other than Ian McDermott steps out on stage, and in his best Darth Sidious voice, he says, Ruin it again. Confirming, of course, what we were speculating on moments before, um, so Palpatine is alive. Is he Force Ghost, Sith Ghost? What will he physically be there? Did he survive uh, the fall down the trench like Darth Maul? Does he have a spider body? <laughs> Has he been eating garbage? Like, where are we at with that Palpatine reveal? Well, George Lucas said he had Darth Maul cut in half so he could never bring him back. Womp womp. That was, and George Lucas brings him back. So. We never even saw Palpatine explode. We just saw the presumed dark side power coming flying up the shaft. So who knows? Now, isn't it the death of? Isn't it the death of the Palpatine by Vader, which makes Vader the chosen one? And now, if he is not 
dead. He was not the chosen one. He did not bring balance to the force. There's just like, it, it just hurts my head to think about Palpatine in the final chapter of a nine story book because this is like what you would set up for episode seven and how to uncover how he survived and have that three part story. Now you're telling me in the conclusion when we have to wrap everything up, we drop the biggest what? Yeah, no, that, I was thinking the exact same thing. It's, it, it sort of makes seven and eight sort of seem like a false start. You know, right. The whole Snoke thing was a uh, like misdirection. Seven and eight are prequels to <laughs> episode nine, which should then begin the next story chapters. I mean, I like Palpatine. I always enjoyed him. So if he's going to be the character that goes from episode one to episode nine, right? rather than Anakin slash Darth Vader... None of the Skywalkers will go from one to nine. Well, you know what? I was analyzing the mural now after the reveal of... Uh, so here at Star Wars Celebration, there is a ginormous uh, mural that's painted. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. But uh, for the last few days, they've had the episode nine section of the panel uh, covered up. And this panel includes everything from, you know, it goes episode in episodic order, groups of characters from each movie. You'll notice that Anakin is displayed on all three episode ones. I think I know what you're going to say. Luke is displayed on all three original trilogy. Kylo Ren is displayed on all three sequel films, not Rey. Oh. Rey is not present on the episode eight mural section. All right. That's so, not where I was going to go, but that's interesting. But that was like my observation. It's like, okay, so is this telling us... Kylo Ren is the focus character of this trilogy, and we're kind of like, Rey is a nobody in the long run. Personally, I'd be okay with that, Yeah. but um, I guess we'll see when they pull off the episode 9 bit. No, they did. That's what I'm oh, saying. they did? They did. And Kylo Ren is on there in oh. his helmeted form. So okay. Kylo Ren is on all three pieces okay. all right. of the sequel, but not Rey. All Rey's right. missing from okay. me. From eight. From I saw eight. that. Yeah, yes. okay. But he's, she's not in nine either. She is in nine. Okay, so she's missing from one. Yes. One of them. Okay. What I noticed was that Darth Vader was only on there once and very small for Return of the Jedi. Yes. For, you know, somebody who, until a couple of years ago, we were telling it was the story of Anakin Skywalker. I know. We I, got Anakin's, but we didn't get a lot of I'd Vader. have to go back and look. Oh, no, I did look. Palpatine's only on the prequels once. And yeah. Then, yeah, but he's something. there prominently. Yes. He's, he's, so Palpatine's yeah. on the prequels. Vader is the enemy on the on the original, and then the sequel trilogy. I have to look. Is who, who's going to be the villain? Who's is Snoke on there? I don't think Snoke's on there. I don't think Snoke made it. I know Phasma's on there, but that's yes. a supplemental character. So uh, another observation from just the mural is uh, Clone Wars represented, Rebels represented. No resistance no represents it. Rogue yeah. One and Solo both represented. So, interesting. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we could spend an hour talking about the, the banner. The mural. Um, let me say, for those of you that are in the room, we have swag up here at the table. We have uh, This Week in Star Wars buttons. We've got a patch. Jake's got some of his uh, Forlom Bazuckas stuff up here. So, feel free to come up during the show and take it. You don't need to ask or uh, anything. Just uh, help yourself, and if you've got some swag that you want to leave in exchange, you're more than welcome to, but you're not obliged to, obviously. All right, so you watched the panel. Live, yes. I I grumbled a bit online once I didn't win any lotteries. Mm -hmm. yeah. I won The Mandalorian, um, and that was it. But um, the way things are being run here, it's uh, pretty doable to find a friend or a helper to trade or get into a panel. Unofficially, we won't go into details. So, what did you what did you think when you did see it? Um, there, yeah, again, uh, beyond the Palpatine, right? Uh, the visuals look amazing. I I don't know what were you know they were so vague. Normally, I feel like in the past. Correct me if I'm wrong, because obviously I can't remember the last five day celebration. Um, <laughs> But I felt like they played the trailer more early on so we could then discuss it with the cast on stage. I don't remember ending with it. And so, because they ended with it, all our discussions with like uh, Stephen Colbert, who hosted, was very vague. 
you know, this thing happens to that, and you can't wait until she does this, but I can't tell you when and where. And it just seemed like there was not enough, like, information that helped us build anything else out. And then we ended on the panel with no, then, discussion. Right. Or the, the trailer. Right. I, I seem to think that that's how it went down with episode eight. Was I think that eight? was at the conclusion, but I didn't go, I wasn't at the panel. So. Now, I know seven started early on. Yeah. They, they pulled the trailer early on. But, I can, again, I can't remember eight. I'd have to go back and rewatch it. But, um, but because of that, my point being, um, we didn't, we didn't, I don't know what's going on. Honestly, I don't. They're going on an adventure. It's not taking place directly after episode eight. And that's, JJ said that during the, yeah. during the panel. Yeah. So, I mean, that's all we have to go off of. They visit a lot of planets, it looks like. Well, there's the desert planet. There's whatever. The, what a lot of people are speculating is a Death Star. A Death you Star see a ruin, in you know, ocean. wreckage of that on yep. an ocean, which to me looks like Octu, but probably isn't. Well, I, I, and I went, okay, it has to be Yavin or Endor. That was my logically, yeah, that's what it would be. And then, of course, about. fans around me who are more well versed in the Marvel comics, because I've kind of fallen off with the Marvel comics. Um, they say the atmosphere on Endor was annihilated with the destruction, so no one can live. So that means there's no more Ewoks. It's a, it's a, Sorry, Amy. Yeah, right? <laughs> um, and so I guess it can't be Endor. But then I go, well, that was the Endor. That was the forest moon of Endor. Is that the actual planet Endor? Could we go there? It's like Yavin. We never saw Well, we, we saw Yavin. Yeah. It was a gas giant. Right. we're led to believe that. So, yeah, so what it looks like the rem- remnants of a Death Star, and one or two, I mean, it, w- would you go to two because that was Palpatine's last resting place, we thought? I don't know how it's connected. I don't uh, understand it. You put a lot more thought into this than I have. I did. I did not, <laughs> actually, I did not go out last night. I was kind of just like stuck in my head in my hotel room, going through pictures and parts of the panel. Um... So we entered, we got to meet a new character who we're led to believe, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, is Lando's daughter. Oh, I thought you were talking about the phallus. <laughs> that big slug worm looking thing. Yeah. Well, okay, I was going to leave that. Yeah. But yes, <laughs> um, Lando's daughter. J- Jana? Jana. Jana. Jana, I believe. Not Jetta. Not Jedi. Not Jaina. Not Jaina. <laughs> oh, right? And but at least she's not a British brunette. <laughs> a white British brunette, because that seems to be the mold for yeah. most women in Star Wars. Right. Um, everybody was very happy that Billy D was there. Yeah. He was hilarious. Yeah. He was like, have you, have you watched the whole panel? Yeah. 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 Just hilarious. Like, trying to reference the fact that everyone personally he feels like accuses him of betraying Han. And at the end, he's like, come on, nobody died. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's his time to shine. Absolutely. You know, it's, uh, he's all that's left, at least in these panels. Well, yeah, you know? if you think about it, I mean, you know, Harrison came out strong for for episode seven. Right. And Carrie and Luke were there for episode eight. Uh, and now nine, we got 3PO and Billy D. No R2. In that trailer. Well, <laughs> it's a JJ I was, film. Uh, I, yeah, <laughs> there was we, we no got R2 a new the droid. first time. We got a new astromech droid. Yes, there was. Called. Actually, Do. Oh, it was a BB-8. It was next to B- Do. Was next to BB-8. Right. That's the new guy. That's the new one. Yeah. But the, uh, it looks like a Pixar lamp droid. Exactly. Or, something. or Snoopy. Or uh, what else did I hear? Spy versus Spy. Oh, that's a good one. I, yeah, I thought it looked like a battle droid head on a wheel, but it's not. No. And that was but my yeah, initial... Yeah, it kind of looks like it. I can see that. Um, so, yeah. Trailer. We got the trailer. We got the title. We got the panel. That's exactly what we expected, right? Yeah. Not, I mean, not a lot. Not a whole lot to go on. Uh, Empire Magazine, uh, a reporter was here. And they spoke to J.J. afterwards, and he did confirm 100% that Palpatine is in the film. Yes. It wasn't just, you know, a fun, like, this is in the trailer. Like, remember when uh, 
remember when Luke did the voiceover for episode 7? I was talking to somebody about that last night. And he wasn't there right. in the movie, uh, nor was that voiceover. Well, this is... Uh, JJ did confirm he's 100% in the film and he was actually shocked that his filming on set wasn't leaked and didn't get out. So JJ was happy about that. And hopefully not a flashback. Well, that happens now. Now, in Star now Wars. that's part of Star Wars. But no, that was, I, I made the argument last night, or not the argument, the observation that if they put Palpatine's laugh in that trailer and then don't pay off with Palpatine in the movie, I will riot right. and burn down whatever theater I'm at. And then they pointed out, like you did, well, Luke's voiceover was in the episode 7 trailer, and while he was in the movie, yeah. he wasn't in it much. No. And go back to, was it episode 2 or 3, where we had the Alec Guinness voiceover at the start. Okay. It was yeah, the, yeah. The, the lines from his hut. Yeah. You know? But and we sort of... We knew we weren't going to get Alec Guinness in a movie, but and we knew we would get Obi Wan. So, but then again, we didn't think we'd ever get Peter Cushing in a film again, too. Huh? Who knows that, nowadays? Oh, good point. Um, oh no, no, I'm just thinking of Rogue One, and that's so awesome. <laughs> Rogue One was a lot of fun. I wish there was a little more love for Rogue One here in the panels. I went to the uh, solo panel yesterday. Yeah. And that was that was a nice, interesting look at it, but that's off the topic. Yeah, I mean, that is that is so... I mean, just talking about the celebration in general, a lot of Last Jedi stuff, because this is the first con since same Last Jedi. Jedi. Yep. And same with Solo. Yeah. So... The know, most you, relevant. I mean, the, it's weird to say that Last Jedi, even though it feels so long ago, was only like month and uh, a year and four months ago or right, so or five right. months ago so it's uh, not that old actually I have to keep reminding myself that in fact this is the first celebration since yeah so it is it's it's the newest saga film um, but therefore we don't get so far we have gotten very little about what's coming up we're going to get a Mandalorian panel tomorrow correct um D23 uh, broke down some news that was from the investors presentation that was on the day before Celebration started. Right. And uh, we got confirmation that um, Mandalorian is going to happen day one. And that's going to be November 12th when Disney right. Plus starts. Right. Um, they also announced that Alan Tudyk is going to be K2SO. Yes. Um, In the Cassian show. In the Cassian show, correct, uh, with Diego Luna. Um, so those two properties are still coming. Um, but also what unfortunately was announced then as well is Bob Iger said Star Wars films are going on hiatus after episode nine. Right. While there will be new films, it's not going to be anything right away. So we're not going to keep this pace we've had for the last, what, five years now of having movie after movie after movie. Unlike the Marvel Universe, you know, that, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but even that is going to slow down because uh, this month after Endgame, there's no movie officially announced. I know Spider-Man's coming out, but it's that's technically Sony right. um, partnership. So an actual MCU, again, is also kind of slowing down. And uh, what they announced, like three or four uh, television properties on Disney Plus for that as well. Right. So I think they're going to focus now on capturing some home streaming money before revealing more about whatever Ryan Johnson or the guys from Game of Thrones is going to be up to. I did see that as well. And I mean, I think I don't know how long Disney investors. I mean, between us, you give a Star Wars film and a, you know one Star Wars film and two or three Marvel films in a year, <laughs> especially if one of them is a big Marvel film, like a Captain America film yeah. or an Avengers film. Disney's foregoing three billion or more. Oh yeah. In box office receipts. Yeah. I don't know how long investors are going to be happy with those properties sitting on the shelf. Well, no matter how much they're bringing in from their home streaming. Well, home streaming is going to bring in some money, but it's only seven bucks right. a home. Right. <laughs> As I opposed mean, to, if I take my family to the movies, we're dropping 50, 60 yeah, bucks just right. on... Right, one ticket is yeah. double that. Right? Yeah. So, um, 
I would be surprised if those if they're going to allow those properties to sit on the shelf very long. But we'll see. Um, all right. Well, you as the uh, proprietor of from Four Long Bazookas and your podcasting presence, Hasbro and Star Wars toys are your thing. Absolutely. Yesterday we had the Hasbro panel. Um, both you and I separately interviewed the Hasbro team this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to be putting my interview on, I'll be posting that in tomorrow's show, but we'll still talk about the, you know, what they told me today. Uh, Jake might share some of what he's got, what he doesn't want to keep bet. secret for his own show. You bet. Uh, but let's just start with the, the panel okay. and, the, and the new announcements. Um, what excites you? I am, I, I think I'm a minority in this, but I really do enjoy the retro collection. I, I really was excited about a, 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 a new, you know, I, I like things that are quirky because you and I have been collecting Star Wars figures for decades now. It's horrible to say, but even modern Star Wars figures now for decades. Yes. And so, um, how many Darth Vaders do you need announced that make you excited? that are, look like Darth Vader. Can we answer for Ryan? Right. <laughs> Ryan's not in the wrong podcast. Um, but you know, so when I see something like what was announced yesterday, that they're taking the retro collection and they're creating a Darth Vader that looks like the figures create in prototype form, that, that makes me excited because that is something that is going to stand out in decades worth of, I mean, you keep the glorious... You keep the glorious spreadsheet on how many figures are produced um, on your website. Where? Oh, a little feedback. Hot mic, hot mic. Um, I think when you. No. There you go. It's me. It's you. <laughs> You're a cyborg. Um, a, a prototype looking Vader is going to set out from decades of Vader figures. And so I, I'm excited about that. They're making an action figure that looks like it's uh, in prototype form where each limb and each piece is cast in a different you know, a resin material. So to me, something like that is different. It's odd. And I love it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the first thing that I saw when I... The first thing that I thought of when I saw it was uh, the first few waves of those comic packs. Yes. Where they were trying to make figures look like the weird off-key... Off uh, yep. Marvel animation. Early comic book printing technology, yes. Um, but, you know, and then I was just, you know, be before I learned, you know, grasped the whole prototype thing. Yeah. You know, I, was just, I had no idea what they were going for. The whole prototype thing makes it cool, I think. It does. What doesn't make it cool at first glance is that it's a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. Right. And we all know that those can cause people to uh, lose a lot of hair in trying to obtain and or money, um, but the nice thing is that I got confirmation from Hasbro this morning is that they are actually um, going to be sold by Target and Entertainment Earth at St San Diego Comic-Con and, um, and that uh, they will then be uh, available later on on their respective on their respective websites, so that's going to be easier for people to get a hold of. I asked them about... Um what they were going to use Hasbro Pulse for and whether they'd be using that for, you know, more exclusives and comic, you know, yeah. I, I think we can expect that that will show up there, just like Hasbro Toy Shop was used for that yes. as well. Um, so, I mean, that will probably be another outlet, at least for a few. And that but, will probably be an outlet for this, this show's convention, too, when it right. goes on uh, right. exclusive, when they go on sale afterwards. What do you think about that, just off topic for a second, the way that those are getting distributed, the, 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 the show exclusives? Yeah, so I guess it, it goes into the same category as I, uh, how I feel about the panels. Mm -hmm. um, I come to these conventions for now almost 20 years, right? I started in episode Celebration 2. So, same with me. Okay, so since 2002 we've been coming here. We've expected a certain experience here. Like if you're willing to wait, you can get what you want. 99.9%. .9%. Like, I was okay to wait overnight for episode 7 and 8 panels because those were one of my reasons for coming here. That's an experience I can't go home and buy on the internet. So, in order to um, uh, learn just moments before your show starts that you can't have that experience, that's frustrating. 
Uh, the same thing with exclusives. I'm happy to stay in line to get what I want. With the lottery system, which they have now in place, your panels and your exclusives are like your, your, your they're based on a lottery and your luck. And I know that there's three people here I came to the show with, or I've been walking around the show with, got all four panels. I only got one. And so I don't know how that, you know, that, that makes me even more, you know, I won't say bitter, but like unhappy about the lottery system that some people walk around and can have the experience that right. other people just cannot. Like right. I don't have an option to get the exclusives or to see the panels if you didn't. And the app hasn't been working as well, and so that's oh, just been... Well, they've shut it down. Right? It's the, just... The store app. Well, yeah. the store app, but the app in, in general, like you're supposed to be able to reserve panels, mm -hmm. it just doesn't work, and it's hit or miss, and some people get everything, and some people don't, so... Right. Um, yeah, so it, it's been... That is a frustration for me, and I feel bad for people who came here thinking, yeah, I want to get those. I'm a big Episode 1 fan. I need to get that Obi-Wan and Darth Maul, but yet I didn't win a lot of, so I can't ever even get in line for one. I mean, a con like Celebration or San Diego or anything is going to have to be about priorities. Yes. They're so big, you can't do everything. Absolutely. And I have no problem with them having a lottery or the Hasbro Pulse premium VIP lottery that some people were able to win as a way to maybe get into a shorter line or yes. you know, have some prior, you know, some advantage to you know winning the lottery and all that. But they, I think anybody should be able to get in that Hasbro line and get those figures if that's how they want to spend a day. Exactly. Well, like uh, Funko does this at um, Emerald City Comic Con. Mm -hmm. Lotteries for the morning. And what is left after the morning... Right. People can queue up for right. it. And, you know, there's not as much in the afternoon because of the morning, mm -hmm. but you have, you know, if you're willing to put in the time, you usually pays off. Right. Well, I mean, Celebration Orlando two years ago, Hasbro gave out the, the tickets. Yeah. You know, and if you were in line to get the ticket, you know, early enough, you got the ticket, and then you got, you got to come you back. Got priority. Yeah. But I never got in that line. I never got a ticket. There were opportunities still for me to get yeah. that Luke X way. Yeah. And I, 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 I agree with you that I think it's unfair if you don't even have a chance you don't have before a you walk in the door. Yeah, and also, I mean, while I do like it, it is difficult for those who don't have a chance, the fact that they're one set per person, mm -hmm. because like maybe, you know, I mean, how, how does a loose and a open collector who gets two of each get that, unless you had multiple badges and you won multiple lotteries, you know, it's just, right. it's, it, it, it's, it is a frustration, or, you know, how could I help you out if I won the lotto and you didn't, you know, by buying two of each, it might right. be easier, but, yeah, so it's, uh, there's some new challenges here at this celebration, Star Wars, uh, this convention overall is being run a little differently, I know that Mary Reed is no longer, uh, Mary Franklin is no longer with Reed, uh, Reed Pop, right. um, we know that this con sold out in six days as opposed to six months, so there is some new challenges that we're trying to iron out the ink, uh, the you know the, the cracks in. Absolutely. Um, all right. So more Hasbro reveals. Yeah. Uh, vintage collection. We saw some stuff that you know new packaging, new ways of getting some product out, um, like the uh, the three pack. The three pack for the, the skiff guards. The skiff guards. Yep. Uh, looks interesting. Uh, definitely harkens back to some of the uh, multi packs we had during uh, the Jedi era. Yeah, I was surprised they didn't go with special action figure set. Mm -hmm. I saw a three pack, you know, when those were first announced, and I assumed that would be the packaging that would come with that. Right. But now they're they're, they're giving us something a little nicer because and we know why. Obviously, they want to get us those carded versions. Right. So they're trying to get those figures out on a carded. So the the type of packaging that you're talking about, the three pack was like when they were trying to get rid of figures yes. after Jedi. They just right. throw them all together in a bundle. Right. Uh, I mean, they they did that in the modern line in the early days. Those three packs at the uh, warehouse stores. Yes. It's, it's yeah. similar Sam's to that. Club. The Sam's Club. With the power of the Force. Yep. Right. Um, but then, like, it reminded me of the uh, the German exclusives from the Jedi era um, where you had the you know several figures yep. thrown in that sleeve so it evokes that uh, we've got the Luke Skywalker 3 pack yes so 
Jedi Destiny set yes. is what they're calling it. And it's three versions of Luke Skywalker. Uh, his uh, Stormtrooper, which is correctly scaled to be sh- a little short. Right. Um, X-Wing, which is an all-new mold, they say. Mm-hmm. And a Jedi. Uh, Jedi, where they're trying to still get that figure right because they've Never zigged have. and zagged on it <laughs> multiple times. But uh, yeah, it's kind of like the definitive trilogy Luke set, it looks like. Yeah, yeah. Lot, lots of accessories. And that's uh, Comic Con, right? That, unfortunately, uh, almost is going everything to be... we saw was Comic Con. <laughs> uh, my favorite was the, um, the Boba Fett, also from Comic Con, the six inch. Okay. With the uh, retro coloring. The 1979 Kenner colored um, Boba Fett on a uh, Star Wars card back. Yes. So very similar to the 40th anniversary Empire cards. This is a Star Wars card back. Um, it looks great. Um, but it's not an exact one for one. I was chatting with Laura, who was the actual painter on the figure uh, this morning in the Star Wars booth, and they went back and forth. They did a version that was specifically like in Kenner colors and they're like this just doesn't look like a black series figure and so you'll notice they did put a little wear and tear on it they did put a few of the things that was missing from the Kenner like the right. the Mando logo on the shoulders okay. and uh, they did put some slight because because the figure sculpt has battle damage in it so they're like well let's kind of bring that out a little bit so it's got some wash on it it's not it's meant to be kind of a tribute to Kenner and not a, here's just a repainted Boba Fett, you know. It has, the, it's still in essence a Black Series collector line tribute, I guess. Yes, but you see it and you think vintage absolutely. Boba Fett. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, even, you know, the, it looks great on the card back, it looks great on its own. Absolutely. And unlike a lot of the Black Series exclusives, we've had I'm, I'm trying to think off the top of my head this is substantially different than the retail release well yeah I mean if you think about I mean and they had an image during the panel where they showed like a montage of all their different exclusives in the past right Right. I mean a lot of them were repackaged like right. Stormtrooper just a new package uh, Jin and Luke and Ray all same figures, just repackaged. The, we're getting the something. The ones we're getting here. Yeah, we're getting something exclusively new here. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, I'd say apart from the first Boba Fett, <laughs> when you got the haunted carbonite, this is the first time. Uh, yeah, I mean, because like Thrawn came with lots of cool accessories. That's true. I forgot about Thrawn. But he yeah. was the same figure. He, he same came figure. with accessories. Right. Uh, but yeah, I mean, for the most part, I guess we did get that. Oh, well, I guess the sell. The centerpiece had some exclusive bits to it. The whole extension with Kylo, yeah. and the Kylo himself was a battle damage version. All right. So, so it's yeah. a rarity. It's not. It's not. It's not unique, but yep. it's a rarity. Um, all right. Uh, just again, just a reminder. Um, we've got swag up here. If you want it, come on up and get it. At the end of the show, I'm also going to have a special piece of swag. If you're paying attention, which you're not. <laughs> um, so <laughs> that guy is that guy is all right. So uh, white elephant in the room, white, white elephant, eight hundred pound gorilla, whatever the word is from the Hasbro panel. What everybody thought we were going to get was Haslab. Haslab, no lab. Well, not right now. Right, they're working on it. I think they're still trying to iron out the. Uh, I've already said that. They're trying to fix whatever international things I think that that's my that's my opinion they need people to recover I mean $550 for people who collect $10 stuff is 10 to $20 stuff that's a chunk it's a, I agree it's a big investment my attitude was okay the internet you know internet reviews and comment sections it's usually the people who are upset yeah, you know the the one percent that is very upset makes ninety nine percent of the noise. Right. But I figured almost everybody that got their barge that I've spoken to is extremely happy with it. Oh, it's amazing! It's a you great know, piece. Yep. Yeah, worth worth twice that. Unfortunately, I'm unfortunately, gonna that. I'm going to edit that out. Right. Um, but I, mean, I think right now that there's 
a lot of goodwill. I can understand, like, they couldn't announce one at Toy Fair yeah. because nobody had gotten their barge yet, and it, for all we knew, it was going to be a disaster, so why are you going to plop down right. a lot of money in advance? But right now, they're sort of, if they're ever going to have a halo effect, it's right now, where all these people got their barges a couple weeks ago, a month ago, we're all still really happy with it, discovering, you know, what it can do. Sure. And if they said right now, okay, here's you're going to be your whatever, your Death Star, your Cloud City, your Blockade Runner, I'd here take you know like the internet memes, you know, shut up and take yeah. my money. I, but no. Yeah, no. They, they, this would be a prime time to strike. Um, they also, I think, are preoccupied. Um, they've had some transition in their development uh, team, right? Steve yes. Evans, yes. who spearheaded that um, project, has moved away. Vicki Stratford is now his replacement as design director. Um, she uh, chatted with her a little bit yesterday. Um, Steve Evans is a huge fan of the line and always has been. You know, I've had him on Toy Run, spoken to him no numerous times in person. He bleeds Star Wars. He got through college by selling vintage right. figures, right? Um, Vicki Strafford is uh, very good at her job, but she's not that fan. Um, so I don't know if that uh, HasLab, like that project, is going to be her, you know. I mean, I'm sure they're working on something, but, you know, I'm not sure it's going to have the expediency or the, or the, the, you know, the push behind it like Steve had with the cell barge. Right. Well, I think that's clear. Yeah. So, uh, but... Again, we don't know the books. We don't know. We can only assume that they... Obviously, if they set a minimum of 5000 that's what they... You know, that was their break-even point. It's just a million dollars you know, plus. They, you know, they, they exceeded that by more than half. Yep. So... So it is a successful model, and like we've talked before, right. whatever HasLab is next, it will fund within a week because uh, barges are selling for two grand here on the floor. Well, I won't say they're selling, I'll say that they, they are, are available listed. for sale. Right. <laughs> so I don't know how many have actually gone that way, but... Um, that, I haven't seen is, a lot walking around the aisles. Right. You know, people pushing them around. Wheeling them down to the FedEx store or something, right. you know. Um, no, yeah, yeah, we've discussed that in the past. The next one... There will be a lot of speculation on whatever it is. For those who want to spend money, though, <laughs> there's a there's another set of figures coming, though, from the Hasbro panel that was announced. Right. The Galaxy's Edge. Galaxy's three Edge. Three packs. Three, three packs. and four packs. Right? Yeah. Three and four packs that are coming to uh, the parks uh, what, this later this year when they right. open. Well, we knew about the first one already. It had leaked it right. unofficially. Right. And yeah, the Kylo Ren and a Mountain Trooper and was it Pyre. Commander Pyre. Okay. So uh, yeah, so those are that is the it is called what is it called? It's called uh, Galaxy's Edge, the first order pack, so it's pretty on the nose there. I asked about um, I went down to the Galaxy's Edge uh, booth that's here. It's uh, well worth it. Uh, each day they're swapping out the collectibles that will be available in the park. So while they didn't have the Hasbro stuff on display, because Hasbro had that, I was able to chat with them about it. And uh, they said the Mountain Trooper will debut in Galaxy's Edge, but you will see him in future places as well. So I'm assuming, assuming that that means uh, he will pop up in um, Episode 9. Right. Because if it's not Episode 9, then it's going to have to be Resistance. Which is possible, but we don't really get figures right. from that Right, and of much. course, but Pyre is from Resistance. Resistance. So, so there is, so there is those. Uh, you know, we can speculate where that figure will show up, but that will, is destined for new media right. outside of Batu. Right. So, so the other thing I discovered, uh, the back of one of these has a price tag affixed, the Disney price tag, and these three slash four packs are going to retail at seventy dollars. So you got three. Three packs at seventy bucks. That's two hundred and ten, and then you can account for your admission ticket. This is these are pricey sets. Yeah. Cross your fingers. Shop Disney app. I was is gonna going say, to be, have we heard anything about the well, Shop Disney app? No. no. <laughs> um, well, it's Disney. 
It's Disney, so you're going to pay a premium for these. Cool thing they pointed out in the panel, uh, there will be no Hasbro or Disney logos present on this package because uh, like everything being sold in Galaxy's Edge, it's meant to look like it actually can be bought in the world of Star Wars. So you're not going to see the iconic Star Wars logo on anything because that wouldn't exist. There's not a logo right. for your existence. Right. right. So um, Hasbro and Disney will be removed from these um, to the fine print, right? And not the logos. Right. So. I, I was surprised by that. I was too. That's I mean, huge. Disney's about branding. Right? <laughs> well, I guess once you're at the park, branding yeah. isn't as necessary. <laughs> yeah, except, you know, you buy a cookie and it's got mouse ears. So. Right. <laughs> All right. Okay, the next set was the droid set. Uh, where this is one of the four packs. We get C-3PO, R2, um, BB-8, and Captain Rex. Not that Captain Rex. Yeah, the, the, original. the original. The OG. <laughs> so, Pee-wee Herman. Pretty, pee -wee, that, I always forget that that was Pee-wee Herman. Pee-wee Herman, yeah. Star Tours, uh, Captain Rex. But in his... Um, well, what is this deco now? That's not... Look at... So he was... Kind of mostly silver for yes. our original Star Tours. It took place during OT. Okay, he was right. kind of blue for the Star Tours, Star Tours 2. Uh, Adventure Continues, right. which was a prequel based right, right? Yeah, because the Star Speeders were orange. Yes. Okay, and now he's mostly in orange. So this makes us, you know, we know that Batu takes place during the sequel. So this should be your third incarnation of Rex. Two and three and three quarter, and now one and six inch. I mean, I'll give them credit for you know, sticking around. with their continuity, <laughs> right? You know, that we're creating some sort of uh, universe, Star Tours universe. Have we heard that there's going to be a Star Tours shuttle in Batu? Because you have to. You think so? Yes, you have to. Okay, all right. I want it. So there's a, but otherwise, sort of, you know, figures we've seen. Nothing, nothing exciting. Other than the Rex, yes. And right, then, right. Otherwise, otherwise. And then we get, what is this one called? Smuggler's Run. Smuggler's Run. Run. Uh, Chewbacca and Ray, both repacks, correct? They, they appear, so they didn't mention that there was any new features. Those. Right. But they did mention on the 3PO on the previous one, had new sculpted thighs and elbow articulation. Okay. So they took their 3PO and they've enhanced it. So yeah, so you get a, you get a uh, what is this, episode 8. Before we talk about who else is in this, when does this park experience happen? She is in, now that it's called Ray Batu. Right. But she's in the outfit that she wore at the end of 8. So she's just, did they leave Crate and go to Batu? Because it's supposed to be in universe. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be a storyline here. So is this between 8 and 9 then? This whole experience? Well, considering we don't know what happens to her right? at the end of the rise of Skywalker. Could, do you think. Rise of Skywalker could start right after 8 and then jump forward because 7 I mean 8 kind of did that well he said it. there's a gap JJ said there's a gap but I mean do we see the gap though I hope we do not I hope we do not too <laughs> um, so yeah I mean I think it's safe to assume right now that this has to take place I mean she's wearing At some indeterminate point yeah well look at who else is with her on right. this pack Honda well, I was thinking Porgs. Oh, the Porgs, okay. Like, they're going to take Porgs with them. They right. had them at Crate. So Chewie's going to eat them slowly over time. <laughs> so this has to be a correct, like, this is the sequel to, that too is the sequel to Episode 8. It adds up. <laughs> but yes, Hondo Anaka in his um, his appearance, which we've seen already. Right. Um, when they announced the Disney, uh, the, at, what, D23... Uh, announcements. They showed footage of Anunnaki. They're creating the, the yeah, uh, the, automatic whatever they yeah, call it, animatronic, animatronic, yeah, Rondo. state of the art one. So yeah, no, good stuff. I mean, I I'm not a all all in six inch collector. I'm gonna have all three of these sets though. As weird as yeah. that sounds, because right. I just think 
you know, as a former cast member too, there's something to be said about Disney exclusives that hit me in a weak spot. Well, I'm, you know, I'm all in because I'm all in, but yeah. I'm extremely excited about the Hondo figure because I love Hondo. But two new pork sculpts, two new porks. So there's, does that count as three new figures in this pack? Yeah, right? This is a five pack. How many do you count porks as? <laughs> These are five, four, and four. Because you have a, um, a mouse droid in the resistance pack. Okay. So you do have four. And I took pictures of the back of them all at the uh, Hasbro booth. And they are all individually listed on the back. So, yeah, these are these are going to be fun. But again, you're going to be paying 210 for uh, one set. You're like my buddy John, who buys two of everything since the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. um, he's like a 420 for these. Yeah, no, I'll have to get. Uh, I'll want openers, and I'll want there you in go. the box. So but there's your if I'm, already, if I'm at Disney, I'm already. Yeah, you know, right. You've prepared. Coming yourself. to Disney is like coming to celebration. You just don't add up the total. You, yeah. Um, you ignore it. So, anything else exciting that you heard or uh, learned? Yes, Galaxy's Edge. Here's a scoop for you. Um, chatted with some of the uh, the merch designers and creators and directors down there in their panel, or in their, not panel, but their booth, uh, their little sample. Have you walked through it yet? No. Okay, so they've got it down there. So each day they flip out the merchandise. Because mm -hmm. what they want to do is they want to show you the stuff that they're going to be selling. And so yesterday it was Resistance and... Uh, uh, first order and it was the toys that represent so it'd be like us going into a museum and buying tanks and and start you know in jet fighters right like uh, remember uh, the Hot Wheels well Persian Gold remember that when they just made all that merch oh, yeah. for the yeah, yeah. Gold War um, so it's something along that line right that's how they're trying to brand that well today they flipped out the merch today to represent what's going to be in their marketplaces and um, like their Tatooine like trader type stores yeah and um they have plush, and they have uh, lots of um, uh, creatures from the Star Wars saga. Uh, they have Wart, the little Jabba frog that sits outside, right? right, right and you right, right. squeeze his back, his tongue flicks out. They got those little spider, the cricket spider, whatever it is from Resistance, the Macquarie, you know, inspired thing. Um, uh, they have a Minoc that, kind of like Jurassic Park toys, you flip on the back and it flaps and okay. it has a suction cup. All right. Um, the coolest thing that I saw is uh, they have um, Ray's doll. No, sorry, wrong Star Wars brunette. Jin's doll, Stormtrooper doll. The Stormy, from, yep, yeah. The, they, they got a hold. They were actually able to get the actual toy prop and replicated it perfectly, and they will be selling that at the uh, stores. That's pretty um, cool. But what they didn't have on display, but they might tomorrow, because tomorrow they're going to flip out the merchandise again and have all droid merchandise, because, you know, they're doing a large droid factory now. They're one-inch droids that come down a conveyor belt, and you actually put it together, and when you put it together, it then interacts in different parts of the park. Like, if you're in the First Order area and you have a, a resistance droid, yeah. it will, like, freak out or scan people, right? So, um, of course, I'm more curious because I love the Droid Factory 3 and 3 quarter. So I asked specifically about that, and they said they have... Um, I talked to one designer, and he said he's he's been working on it for the whole time. Um, he is super excited about this year's Holiday Droid. And he goes, remember, Holiday for us starts in August. So I'm assuming it might be a Halloween, because normally the right. Halloweens drop pretty early. Um, but they also said the Droid Factory will continue will be compatible with, but we're going to get stuff we've never seen before. Another designer let it slip that we're going to get a playset. So, playsets, okay. new building bodies, and new exclusives. And I think they said there's going to be three exclusives. So, a Droid Factory playset? Droid Factory, yep. Because something we haven't seen before. So, that, it's going to be good stuff for uh, us out there. who, Because they haven't really put out any new bodies since no, last celebration. Last celebration. Right? right. We were, the protocols. Yep, the protocols. So for the Build-A-Droid build -a -droid experience, they, he said everything is taken a back burner to Galaxy Edge. You know, right. they like all the merch. I mean, there's beautiful stuff over there, but it's not the Droid Factory. Anymore. So we've had to kind of like, things have been pushed to the front, and that's been pushed to the back. So... Are you going to Galaxy's Edge? First week of August. Plan? First week in of Disneyland. Disneyland, obviously. Yep. Yeah. Well, I'm look excited. forward to hearing about it. I'll I'm be going excited. in December. World? To, yeah, to Orlando. So that's when I'll spend my 
20 bucks <laughs> on figures. Well, uh, or sooner, because these sooner. figures drop on, uh, uh, these sets say spring 19. Right. So if the app comes up, you could if they show up be having them early. Which would be great, because then I don't have to bring them back. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so what's the coolest thing you've seen on the floor? Oh, wow. Um, and without saying Hasbro, um, well, if Hasbro is the highlight. Man, it is my highlight. You know, I have, I have, last few years I've started to cut back my my exploring other lines, right? I've just kind of wanted to mo become more honed, more focused. So, like, I've been having these garage sales at my home and working toy shows and kind of getting rid of stuff that I'm like, I liked it, but I don't love it. And so, you know, we're middle aged now, so we gotta really focus on the stuff we love and stop trying to dabble in everything else. So um, I think Hasbro has been, has made me a lot, really happy with uh, uh, all the stuff that they put out. Um, I, you know, there's always so much to do here. I mean, I, again, Galaxy's Edge got me really excited. I love walking through that booth. You should definitely do it. Right. I mean, I've walked by it several yeah. times. And there's always a line. Yeah. And, but it uh, goes fast because it's a, it's like a, you walk at your own pace once you're inside. Yeah. So you can take photos or you don't or you can go look at the merch right. or you can record your what Star Wars means to me and Galaxy's Edge slots in yeah. a photo booth or whatever. So Yeah, um, it's definitely on my list yeah. you know, for the next I'd make two sure. and a half days, but I'll uh, go there early one day. Sand Suites, uh, Rancho Obi Wan's on my list. Always still impressive. Do. Yeah. Always nice to see what he brings. So, uh, and then you're a big autograph guy. Have you did, done any yet? Uh, I've done a couple. Yeah. I got a uh, Tally. Okay. The, the A-Wing pilot. Hermione. Yeah, Hermione uh, Corfield. Um, who else did I get? Oh, um, Infus Nest. Yeah, cool. Uh, Aaron Kellyman. Yep. And uh, Katie Sackhoff. Awesome. So I wanted to get more from Battlestar. Did you? Although, I mean... You got two? No, I just I got her to sign a Star Wars thing. Oh, it's yeah. a Star Wars con, but I was gotcha. excited. If it was some other... Do they have other? They don't have other stuff up there, do they? Franchises? No, no, no. no. But, uh, I mean, I'm sure if I brought yeah, some something. Starbucks thing, she would have signed it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm a fan of her for who work outside of yeah. it. Sort of like Paul Bettany. I'll, I'll be getting his tomorrow. You know, I've always liked, you know, I like his role in, you know, as Dryden Voss. It was fine. Dryden Voss. I mean, I really liked Solo, and he was fine. But, you know, going back to, I think the first time I ever saw him was American? like that Master and Commander movie. Oh, yeah. Years yeah. Well, and years ago. Well, I was ago. thinking uh, A Beautiful Mind. Beautiful Mind. Beautiful Mind. He's like clearly in with Russell Crowe and uh, Ron Howard. Yeah. Yeah, you know, they're all tight. So, and I love uh, that he has that comeback story you know because did you hear have you heard that story have you heard that story where uh, he said that um, you know no, he thought he was done with Hollywood because people were like what, what, you, what are you what value do you right. have you know right. he seemed pretty dejected and thinking about like okay I guess that was over right. and then he's had this resurgence of things like the vision he's in the mm -hmm. number one franchises in the world now right and again sort of as uh, you know Every who man. knew that that was going to happen yeah you know when he did the voiceover in that first Iron Man movie right that it was going to that he could spearhead <laughs> into an actual character and now he has his own now, uh, TV his, series coming he's got his own TV series and he Wanda handed Asia. that job off to his wife you right know, who's the, the yeah Friday 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 so um, alright so our time is up so we'll wrap up Jake, where can uh, people find you? As always, yeah, make sure to check us out. I'm from ForlamTheZuckus.com. We are all things Star Wars action figures, Kenner, modern, you know, you name it. Uh, I love, love, love collecting, and it's just becoming so popular now. Um, Star Wars action figures in pop culture, like, you know, in magazines or in movies or TVs or trailers. I mean, even in commercials for other brands, you right. can now find Star Wars action figures. So, I mean, I've been on your site and seen that list and looked at it, and there's, because I always thought I was pretty good at catching stuff. Oh, and geez. every now and then I'll go like, oh, there's this. Yeah. I bet he doesn't know about this. And it's, <laughs> it's there. It's so. fun. It's fun. I, you know, I won't take full credit. I have a lot of people help me out, you know, when they see those pop up. Um, mm -hmm. I think one of the most recent was... Uh, Spider-Man's trailer. No, more, more recent. Well, he, there are action Dude. figures in Spider-Man Far From Home right. trailer. Right. But there was Spider-Man action figures. There were Star Wars figures in the first trailer, too, for uh, Homecoming. Right. Um, but the coolest news, I think, has come out. And this is, again, brand synergy. Um, there is a vintage Obi-Wan Kenobi and a vintage Warwiss Man 
in Toy Story 4. So there's a party scene where the toys are playing, and an old Ben is talking or fighting or something to a warwiss man in the back. So I love that. Uh, well, that'll that, be awesome. Yeah. That would be a great... Another reason to go see Toy Story. Well, another reason to uh, ramp up that retro collection and get those two figures out and slap as seen in Toy Story. Oh, yeah. Or maybe we'll get him in the Toy Story line. Line, right? Isn't that crazy? That would be uh, blow your mind. Right? That's too meta. <laughs> It's too meta. So, yeah. Right. So you can find us there, and then of course you and I both uh, frequent the Galaxy of Toys podcast. Right. So make sure to subscribe to that when right. we uh, pop on there to talk about toys. And I, um, I recorded the Hasbro panel. You'll be putting it up on this week in Star Wars. Yeah. I think I'll send it over to Jason at Galaxy of Toys. So make sure to get people covered. Okay. Well, thanks for uh, sitting in with me. Well, thanks for having filling me. Filling in my uh, That's awesome. vast ignorance on a lot of this stuff. Um, so everybody thanks for listening if you're here at the show come on up and get the swag I will break out the special you sat through the show swag I see Sky in his uh, tiny what, t-shirt what, what was his name again what's your name again Jasper, Jasper. so uh, whatever about to happen is going to be a lot better than what I just did so uh, <laughs> thanks for listening and um, we'll have uh, shows for the rest of the week and a recap when I get home. Thanks. <laughs>